This is your camshaft for a girly hydraulic roller lifter. This is your camshaft for a manly and violent solid roller lifter. And this time on Engine Masters presented by Amsoil, we're gonna help you decide which one is right for you. Here's our dyno mule for the day. This engine is like my pet. It's been around here at West Tech Performance as a mule for pretty much a dozen years. It's just a very basic big block Chevy 454. And you know what? You're gonna wanna pay attention because this thing is a sweet combination for just a pump gas, straight drivable, 600 horsepower big block. Again, just a 454, it's got Wiseco Forge pistons in it, it's 10 and a quarter to one compression. The cylinder head is an Edelbrock CNC ported oval port that matches the intake, which is an Edelbrock dual plane performer RPM air gap. The carb up top is a Holley Ultra XP, which is 950 CFM. Then there's the heart of the matter, which is the camshaft. This thing's currently running a hydraulic roller, which is a comp cams grind. It's the one they call an XE 294HR. And in this episode, we'll be comparing it to that solid roller camshaft. But right now, let's hang this thing on the dyno and make some noise. It's time for the Amsoil Super Sauce. We called these guys and told them what we were doing with the solid versus hydraulic cam showdown. And their concern was making sure that the hydraulic lifter was not affected in any way by oil viscosity or pressure, which can change with temperature. So they advised the premium protection 1040, which is a thin enough oil that it's not gonna be affected by the orifice size in the side of the lifter. And they say it'll be really stable regardless of temperature. So we should get a more scientific test than we might with a different oil. Drink. Getting really good. This is gonna be the A test. This is our baseline with the hydraulic roller camshaft. 600, go! I think it'll make it. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. Well, it wasn't 600. Awful close. I but it was 598. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Let's see what I the saw, actual data says. I saw 597. Oh, no, there's eight. Yep, eight 598. Yeah. And we ran it to 6,700. The end of our hydraulic roller test, it's making 575 pound feet of torque all in here. Look at that flat curve. And then up at the top, we made 598 horsepower, but I don't know, that's not taking the sharp jag down. Do you think that's an airflow issue? Do you think it's still? No, I think it's valve control. You think it's valve control? Yeah. This is gonna be a big deal in this test. One of the things that we see all the time is that the weight of a hydraulic roller lifter, especially with the big intake valve on a big block Chevy, and even you must admit, a little bit of a questionable valve train geometry from the factory. A loop. You have to. <laughs> yeah. It ends up floating the valves earlier than it otherwise would. And that might be what we have going on here. We'll know for sure when we put the solid roller in. Yeah, it is gonna be interesting when we put the solid roller in because it actually, the recommended spring for the solid roller are very similar pressures to this. They're not, they're not way up there at 800 like a lot of solid rollers. The street roller line is probably more in the uh, you know, 550, 600 area. And this is also a full travel hydraulic. It's not the short travel. That's correct. But what you were saying, it takes roughly the same valve spring. The lifter's way lighter yeah. on the solid yeah. than it is on hydraulic. It's not filled up with oil. Yeah, and it doesn't have anything inside of it that can go unstable like exactly. a hydraulic. But I'm super curious what's gonna happen down here with the solid, but this is probably where we're gonna see the gain with the solid. What's gonna happen on the bottom, though? Does it matter? I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna find out. Why bench race it and be wrong in front of all these people? Well, I guess you're right. We'll, I'll wait and see. <laughs> Let's install that garbage. All right. Yep. All right, that was 600 horsepower, or 598, which is almost the same thing. Before we get into the differences between hydraulic lifters and solid lifters, I'm gonna give you some camshaft basics. First of all, you understand that the camshaft is spinning inside the engine. And on each camshaft lobe, there's what we call a lifter or a tappet. And as it rides on the lobe, 
it goes up and down and causes the valves in the cylinder head to go up and down. So now when I talk about a camshaft's lift, that is a measurement of how far it is lifting the valve off the seat. And that is determined by basically the size of the lobe on the camshaft. Here's the intake valve inside the combustion chamber of the cylinder head, and it's opened and closed by the camshaft and tappet. So maximum lift is the maximum point that the valve opens to. And the farther it opens, the more airflow you tend to get, assuming that the cylinder head can support it. Duration describes how long that valve is open. Some camshafts might snap it open and go right back closed. Others will open it up and let it hang there for a little while and then close it. The longer the valve is open, the more airflow you tend to get, also the rougher the idle quality, but usually more duration, which means the valve open longer, makes it operate at a higher RPM range than less duration. Now we're down to today's comparison, which is the hydraulic roller camshaft versus the solid roller camshaft. And the key there is the lifter design. This is a lifter or a tappet. The reason they call it hydraulic is that it's activated by oil pressure inside the lifter, which acts underneath a little piston, which sort of dampens the valve train motion. The reason I call this kind of girly is that it doesn't require any adjustment from day to day while you're driving on the street. It's quieter, but it's a heavier lifter. And because of that plunging action, when you're looking at high RPM or heavy valve spring pressures or a lot of lift, it tends to not like to reach as high an RPM as a solid will. The solid roller lifter has no moving parts, which is good. It's much lighter, which helps it achieve higher RPM. And the thing you need to know about it is that it does require lash, which is the distance between the tip of the rocker arm and the tip of the valve. And that's what makes it louder. That's what makes it need more adjustment. And the reason for all of that is that thermal expansion puts the valve train at risk of expanding and locking up solid and holding a valve open, which you don't want. But what you do want is the solid roller lifter for higher RPM use. We're gonna find out if that's true. We've got two camshafts here that are ground very, very similarly. As a matter of fact, by the time you subtract the lash out of the equation, these are virtually identical. What we've done with the help of the Comp Cam's cam engineer is figured out how to make these as close as possible as far as the duration goes, even considering the lash on the solid cam. What's different about them quite a bit is the lift on the solid cam. Once again, that's what makes this more manly and violent, that because it doesn't have that hydraulic plunger in the lifter, you can tend to put more lift and more valve spring pressure onto the solid cam. So that has significantly more lift than the hydraulic cam, but the duration is very, very close and the lobe separation angle is the same. Now let's talk actual specs for you techie guys. The hydraulic roller cam is a Comp XE 294. It's got 242, 248 at 50. The lift is 540, 562, and it's on a 110 lobe separation angle. The solid cam here is an XR286. Now its duration is bigger. It's 248, 254, but when you consider that lash, it takes it down to about the same neighborhood as this camshaft. The lift on this cam is way better. It's 654 and 661. We're gonna see if that makes a difference as we throw the thing into the motor right now. To make the test as scientific as possible, we wanted to use the same valve spring on both camshafts. And so Brulé spec'd this, which is a Comp Cam's part number 933 spring. You really don't want to bang into the cam bearings. Now, gently kind of guide it in, nice and easy. So these guys are getting super irritable about the oil pan gasket I'm putting the solid lifters in. I wanted to make a point. These always have a link bar because you can't have a roller lifter rotating like this on the cam. Really critical to look at the arrow where it's going up because if you put it backwards, these don't run square on the camshaft and it destroys itself immediately, if not sooner. I'm just gonna pour some oil on these lifters before I slide them down into place. One of the other things you need to worry about when you're going from a hydraulic roller to a solid roller is that your push rod length is gonna change because the depth of the cup in the roller is different. Actually, anytime you change anything in your valve train, you're gonna end up needing different push rods is kind of what I've learned. But I think we're happy. Oh yeah? Are these the perfect length? I think they're gonna be flawless.
Okay, refresher course. We now have in the solid lifter cam, same effective duration, same lobe separation angle, way more lift. It's gonna make more power and more RPM. Oh, it's gonna just kick. Yeah. But. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't go quite as hard yeah. as I was hoping for, but it's a happy day. Oh, no, but it, it started running up to the top and it didn't drop off that much. Oh, that's, look at that. That's why there's one kind of camshaft. Yep, yeah. solid <laughs> roller. <laughs> we just made 583 pound-feet of torque essentially forever and 619 horsepower. You know, what's just as interesting to me is how much better valve control there is. Up With here. the same spring, it didn't roll over as quick with some control. But issues. with the same spring and more lift, we have more valve pressure over the nose of the cam yeah, at maximum lift. Right. What Probably. that does is it gives you more RPM down the track too. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you can it's run the thing out to 6,700 RPM yeah. and it's just beginning to roll over. So here's our final answer with the solid versus hydraulic cams. 583 pound-feet of torque, pretty much forever. And then up here, 619 horsepower. You can see how the solid also carried more RPM. The higher you go, the more the curves diverge. But essentially, the solid is better all the way from, say, 4,000 RPM on up. And that's two things, really. It's better airflow with the solid because of more lift. And probably it's also that the hydraulic lifter is collapsing a little bit the more the RPM goes up, thereby reducing duration, and it's duration that gives you RPM capability, right? Absolutely. You're Whatever down with you it? say. Whatever yeah. I said. <laughs> at the very top there, there's almost like a hundred horsepower difference between the two at the top. Yeah, that's what going to go here to here. Interesting when you look at over the, you know, kind of over the nose, where the hydraulic kind of went yeah, away. It's only making 532 there instead of six, 618. You know, 18 or so 19. So if you shift the thing at 6800, that's uh, going to be a significant difference. Right that's there. a big yep. difference. But you know what the most important part of all of this is? What's that? We were right and yeah. we win. <laughs> that's always a good way to end it. We didn't have to gamble on it because we all, all bet the same Everyone thing. Everyone knew. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Beer o'clock. Yeah. Out of here. I feel a little bit depressed. Why? The episode has actually opened my eyes to the value of the hydraulic roller camshaft. Well, you know what? I'm not right. feeling that great myself because... <laughs> <laughs> Same thing? I too like the hydraulic roller. Oh, it's depressing. The thing is, the solid roller cam, I'm still gonna use for drag racing application, right. for my Bonneville stuff forever. It's the better answer for peak horsepower, peak RPM. But you know what? I think anytime somebody's trying to make, say, 600 horsepower or less, or they're running 6,000 RPM or less, just get the hydraulic roller. This is a street motor. It's I know. not a race engine. There's reliability and maintenance issues that you gotta be aware of. Oh, totally. I mean, so much less maintenance if you have a street car. You don't have to lash valves all the time. Right. It's so much quieter. And then, of course, there's the problem with the solid lifter, which we haven't revealed to the audience until now, which is because they have more lift, they have more valve spring pressure, and that big valve spring pressure can tend to actually kill the lifter itself. And when that roller wheel starts to skid on the camshaft, it's all over. No, I've seen that happen a lot of times, and mostly in street applications where a guy wants to drive a lot of miles wants to power the solid roller and yep. it bites them. I see it at Hot Rod Drag Week all the time. I think overall what we learned in this episode is solid rollers are better for horsepower and RPM. The hydraulic is better for the street and on a street engine at only like 10 to one and with an oval port head and low RPM, the 20 horsepower that you gain from the solid roller probably isn't your best choice. Wow, do I feel like questioning my own manhood right now. Well, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'd have to say too that the uh, hydraulic roller is gonna be your best choice in a motor like this every time. I know, we just admitted that. So maybe we'll get better between now and the next episode of Engine Masters presented by Amsoil. In the meantime, check out MotorTrendOnDemand.com. It's our subscription video service. It's nothing but gearhead video. And of course, in social media, we're on Instagram at Engine Masters and on Facebook at Hot Rod Engine Masters. See you next time on Engine Masters presented by Amsoil.
<laughs> Did that make enough noise? <laughs> oh my god. Give us a clap. Getting punchy. Yeah. Yeah. It's that <laughs> magic hour. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Engine Masters presented by Amsoil. Add that little flare to the end. What was what? that all about? <laughs> the point? I thought you yeah. were already out. <laughs>